Adventures of the Teeny Weenies by William Donahue. Gogo and the Cook Run Across an Early Bird. A few days after the big flood, Gogo and the cook washed up the breakfast dishes, cleaned the kitchen, and set out in search of a mushroom for lunch. "'There's some powerful big fat ones over in the big field,' remarked Gogo. "'Why, there was one we all saw one day what was so big that four of us done stand under it while it was raining, and never a single drop done touch us.' "'Listen,' whispered the cook as the little fellows were making their way through some tall grass. "'What in the name of goodness is that awful noise?' "'Sounds powerful funny-like,' answered Gogo. "'Suppose we go through the weeds and see what it is.' The two teeny-weenies pushed their way quietly through the thick weeds, and soon they saw a sight which made them laugh. A young robin stood at the side of a freshly spaded flower-bed, and in his beak he held one end of a big fat worm. The other end of the worm was fast in a piece of earth, and the robin, with his feet braced, was holding on to the worm with all his might.' The robin was gurgling and trying to call for help through his half-closed beak, and the two teeny-weenies quickly saw he needed help if he wished to save the worm. "'Hold on tight!' shouted the cook, running up to the bird, "'and we'll get a pick and dig this old worm out for you.' The bird nodded his head, while the two little chaps hurried over to the shoe-house, where they secured a pick, and shouted to the rest of the teeny-weenies to follow. The Turk caught hold of the bird's tail and helped him hold on to the worm, while the dunce pushed on the robin's chest with all his strength. Gogo soon broke the piece of earth up with the pick, and with one gulp the robin swallowed the worm. "'Whee!' exclaimed the bird, as he moved his head around to ease the stiffened muscles. "'That was some hard job. I haven't worked as hard as that for my breakfast for a long time. I saw that worm and I grabbed on to him, but he was a strong old fellow, for he certainly did hang on to that piece of earth with a powerful grip. I hung right on to him, for I hadn't had a worm for several days, and I made up my mind I'd have him if I had to hold on all day. "'Well, you certainly got him all right,' laughed the policeman. "'You bet I did, thanks to your help,' grinned the bird. "'How would you all like to hear a verse?' said the poet, who had been writing on a piece of tiny paper while the teeny-weenies had been helping the bird to get the worm. "'We'd like to hear it,' shouted the teeny-weenies. This verse is entitled, Would You, said the poet, as he stepped onto a piece of earth, in full view of the little people. I'd love to be a little bird, and hop about the trees, and aeroplane above the land, and fly across the seas. I wouldn't like to eat the things that little birdies do, for I don't care a bit for worms, now honestly. Do you?' 